Hi, I'm Judge Spandle. Some of you know me. That's what Broadview Heights, Broadview Heights does. Some of you don't know me. Some of you have no clue who I am. And all your Summit County people, I'm glad you're here. I need you to tell all your Cuyahoga County friends who are Republicans for March and Democrats for November. First off, I'm a CBR member. If you enjoyed the crab dip, the recipe's still available from last month. Uh, I am now officially endorsed by the Republican Party Sunday. I mention that because the Central Committee voted it. Both of us had an opportunity to be heard. But the one thing about judicial races, there's a judicial screening committee before the vote. It's not just an up and down vote of precinct committee people. They evaluated both of us as candidates and as judicial people. They felt that I was a better candidate both as a candidate and as a judicial person than my friend Elizabeth, who's now my opponent. A couple of little political facts about this particular seat. Court of Appeals has 12 judges. We are the judges that judge the judges. Of those 12 judges, 10 have previously served as judges. The other two who have not, one is a law professor, former law professor at Cleveland State, that was a law director, law director of the city of Cleveland. I say that because I've got 25 years, I'm in year 25 service as a judge. And four of the seven, including my opponent, and three of the others on the other side have never done judicial service. I think that is important. I've also got a political base. Some of you have already voted for me as many as five times since 1987. I've been the judge 24 years in Parma. I've been one of the best judges statewide. Normally you don't talk to yourself. You're not supposed to say I'm better than anybody else, but I do this. Ask any lawyer you know. Chances are if they've been in my court, I'm not even afraid what they're going to give you for a street cred or a rep, because I know I'm a good judge. A week from now, I'll be teaching judges on a whole topic. I do a ton of teaching to judges, do a ton of teaching to kids, and there's a lot of things I do, which you can get a flyer, please. There are helper cards. The flyer just gives you more information and a pretty picture that you can post at home. <laughs> Seriously, I've worked in legislative things through the Ohio Judicial Conference. There are specific things in the law that I've drafted that through my contacts in the legislature through the Judicial Conference, through teaching the Judicial College, through my service on what's called the Criminal Sentencing Commission, which is I'm one of three statewide community judges, that everybody who's a criminal justice system player sits at that table. Many of the things you hear and see about improvements in criminal justice come from this group. Last Thursday, we sat down and worked on trying to make drunk driving law simpler and understandable. If any lawyers in the room, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I got 20 seconds, I can do this. Um, you're gonna hear Elizabeth, she has a nice skill set, but my body of work is far superior. I know that I'm a better candidate than any of the five Ds, as well as my opponent. So please, take a flyer, one to a household, or if you have friends, spread them around. Please take your helper card if you want to help. Dominic, if you'd collect any unused for next month. And three minutes on the button. Anybody have any questions? Any questions? In the back. Why don't the judges let the people, let the juries judge the law as well as the facts? Okay, his question was, why don't the judges let the jury judge the law and the facts? It's very simple. No offense, jurors typically do not know the law, whether it's a, a drunk driving or a felony crime. You have to take the law the way it's written, okay? And in our jury charge, you can't apply your own concept of what it should be, or for that matter, eight jurors in my room, 12 jurors in common pleas, you can't decide what the eight or 12 versions are. Now, let's say you make a ruling, or a judge makes a ruling. Court of Appeals is where we do make law, and somebody disagrees, with a particular finding, they go to the Court of Appeals, three-judge panel would say, you know what? The original judge was wrong, they reverse. The original judge was right, we affirm. If two different appellate districts, have you heard about the speeding thing that happened last year about the Supreme Court? One set of appellate districts said, you don't need radar laser. Others said, you don't have to do that. That's called a certified conflict. And that goes to Columbus and the Supreme Court decides. But because, no offense, jurors are not lawyers and don't know the law, and quite frankly, I don't know it all. No lawyer knows all the law. That's why you take the facts and decide the facts. You then apply the laws, the judge gives it to you, and then you come to your decision. Other questions? Yes. Okay. Um, I served on jury duty last summer. I was downtown every day for a okay. I never served any jury. Isn't there any way we can improve that? System. Her question is about jury service. She's there five days, fourth floor justice center. I was there once a number of years ago. Coffee stinks. There's a lot of old magazines. 
Um, each court has their own process. In my court, because we're smaller, come and please, they've always had a potential lead for juries any given day of the week. That's why you're there, that's why you may sit. Even if you're called for a panel, what's called a venare, you might not get to be a juror on that case. I actually got finally at one point to go sit in a venare, although I was not selected. My court, now to, I am, I am the, those of you who live here, I am the Debbie Nicastro, Jennifer Weiler of everything east, west of Brexel and Independence. Now, I don't know how they do it. Our court only has juries one week a month, four days a week, because that's all we need. We have a system where, okay, today's a Wednesday. If we have jury week this week, after five o'clock you call and say, don't come in tomorrow, because we don't have a jury or the juries went away, because that saves money. But that works for us. In common pleas, they always have a potential lead for jurors, which is why you always see people sitting there on the fourth floor waiting. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, what percentage of your judgments were overturned by the appointment? Very few. First off, the side story, or Judge Jim D. Sweeney retired. Okay, the question was, what percentage of my decisions were overturned? I don't think I've had four or five or six appeals in the last years, and only one's been reversed, which is a current one. First off. I don't get many appeals because I learned one thing years ago. If you write a good decision, people don't appeal it. They may not agree with me, but it's a well-written decision. I have one now where I got reversed, but it's, I gotta tell you the story, it's CEI and Ohio Bell fighting over some wires on two poles in Brooklyn Heights that a truck hit. And it narrowed down to a 1925 poll agreement. There's an agreement for all that jazz. And I had said it should go to arbitration. The public utility should do this. See, I appealed it. Judge Larry Jones wrote a great dissent. It's about a month ago. I still think I'm right. They said, no, Judge, you go ahead and hear the case instead of letting the Public Utilities Commission decide whether or not they'll put their wires on the walls. Other than that, I just got an affirmation this past week on a uh, criminal case on housing. To be honest, I would have to say in 24 years, I can think of maybe two reversals and maybe eight appeals over 24 years. So if anything, I've had so few appeals. Now, others in this race, not this side, some on the other side have had a lot of reversals. But that's not for tonight's discussion. Yes, sir. Mr. Ryder, Jack Neville, uh, you missed getting this question on the Judicial Selection Commission for the Bar Association. And, and it was nice to hear you two weeks ago. Go ahead. Do you think you are at a disadvantage coming from the municipal court where you don't try felony? Right, don't get yeah. significant. The, the explanation of Mr. Neville's question, Mr. Neville's on the Bar Screening Committee, which means the judge for yourself is four different bar associations. You're on Cleveland Metro? Okay, so we have one big meeting for all judges, or all candidates. Each bar association does their own evaluation comes out what their rate is. I was excellent last year unopposed. We'll see the pending results now for the appellate. Let me back to his question. I have a disadvantage as a municipal court judge. They used to say, you know, you better be a common police judge before you go appellate. It's actually old hat in a sense. Right now, of the 12 appellate judges, I believe 40% of them never sat as a common pleas general division. In other words, felony court people. Of the 60%, Judge Rocco came from juvenile court. Judges Gallagher, Kilbane, Conway, Cooney, and Keogh, which is one third of that bench, came from the municipal court. So you've got four from municipal court, that's a third. Two came from non-judicial service. Kenny Rocco was a juvenile, and then I think the other four or five, let's see, Celebrezzi, Boyle, Gallagher, they came from common pleas. I think in the old days, it may have been more of a point, but now, and many of the appeals, as I was saying in a previous interview, a lot of the appeals you hear criminally are the same things from felony court to a great extent that we hear. We were in a lot of drunk driving, which is, did the police have a reason to stop? Or is there a probable cause to arrest? That's the meat and bread of a lot of OVI drunk driving cases. Felony appeals in criminal court many times is the same thing with a drunk stop. Did the officer have a good reason to stop a car at 79th and Kinsman? And did they have enough probable cause to arrest for drug violations? Many of the cases I do, and I teach a lot of case law and a lot of appellate law, is, hey, these drug cases have as importance as OVI, just as the OVI cases have drug law importance. I don't think it's an impediment anymore, Mr. Neville. Any other questions? I thank you all. Thank you.